Hello everyone, I'm Yadaki Reddy and welcome to my channel HYR Tutorials. In this video, I will explain about optional parameters in TestNG. So in my previous video, we have already discussed about parameters inside the TestNG, right? So what are the points that we have covered? So this is my previous video agenda guys. Okay, so these are the points that we have discussed inside the previous video. So first we have seen what is the use of TestNG parameters. Then we have seen how to use the TestNG parameters, right? So we have seen how to use the TestNG parameters at the suit level as well as at the test level. So we have also seen one more thing. So what is that? So if you provide any parameter with the same name at the suit level and also at the test level, which parameter is going to take the highest priority? So that concept also we have seen, right? So those are the points that we have actually discussed in my previous video. So if you haven't watched my previous video, please watch that video and come back to this video guys. Because if you want to understand about these optional parameters inside the test engine, first you should know what exactly the test engine parameters and what are the parameters actually. So this concept you should be actually aware of. So if you don't understand these concepts, if you don't know what exactly these test engine parameters and all, it is waste of time to watch this video guys, okay? So without this test engine parameters knowledge, if you watch these optional parameters inside the test engine, you will not understand anything. So I will request you to watch first test engine parameters video, then come back to this video guys. So if you have already watched the previous video, please continue watching this video. So in this video, we will mainly focus on the optional parameters inside the test engine. So this is the agenda for today's session guys. So first we will see how to use the test engine optional parameters. Then we will also see how to pass the default value for a parameter inside the test engine. So these are the points I'm going to explain inside this video. So first what exactly these optional parameters are? So here basically parameters means you have to pass the value always, right? So that means we are actually passing the value every time in the parameters, right? So in the optional parameters by the name itself, you can see these are actually optional. That means even though if you don't pass any value, still the parameters are going to work. So those are called as optional parameters. So these parameters will have a default value internally. So as a user, if I forgot to pass a value or if I don't want to pass the value also, my script should not get failed. So in those scenarios, we will go for the optional parameters. So this optional parameter will have some default value. So whenever we as a user don't provide the values to the method, this default value will be considered as a parameter value guys. So now let's see how to use this optional parameters here. So this is how we are actually passing the parameters inside the methods, right? So first we will define the parameters inside the testng XML file. Then we will read the parameter values with the parameters annotation. And then we will pass that value to the method using this method level parameters, right? So if you don't pass any value for that, it is going to throw the exception. So let's see. So I'm not passing the browser name value here. So let's remove the value from here also. So let me run this program and let's see what will happen. So now you can see the flow is failed actually and we are not getting any exception also inside the console. So that is because here it is expecting the browser name parameter but we haven't defined the browser name parameter here, right? So in that scenario, it is going to throw the exception for you. So we need to avoid this kind of exceptions, right? So I mean by mistakenly, we will not pass the value or I don't want to pass the value for every test. For suppose if I am passing browser name for every test, right? So intentionally I am mentioning that, okay, this, this test should be opened in the Firefox and this should be opened in the edge. So if I don't want to pass any value for this browser name field, my test should be by default open in the Chrome browser. So for suppose here we are mentioning this test should be opened inside the Firefox. So if I don't mention any browser name, then by default my test should be opened in the Chrome browser. So that is my requirement. So how do I fulfill that? So if I create another test, so let's take this test only. So if I take this test and if I don't mention the browser name parameter here, my test is going to throw the exception, right? But I don't want to throw the exception. Instead of that, I want to go with the default values. So whenever the user is not passing any parameter value, I want to consider some value as a default value and I want to proceed with the execution. So for that, we need to provide the optional parameters. So how do you define the optional parameters? So here we need to make the parameter as a optional guys. So we have one annotation called optional. So that annotation we have to use inside the method. Here we have some test method. So inside the test method, we are passing the parameter, right? So whatever the value we are capturing here, that value we are passing into this browser name parameter, right? So what exactly I need to do is I need to make this one as an optional field. So here now we made this one as an optional parameter, but we need to pass some kind of a default value also, right? So that means whenever the user is actually not providing any value, we have to go with some default value. So where do you pass a default value? So here inside the optional annotation itself, we need to pass a default value. So we need to mention like this. So I will say Chrome browser, fine. So here, let me execute this time. So this time it should not throw any exception, right? 
So the first test should be executed inside the Firefox and the second one should be executed inside the Chrome. And one more thing guys, whenever you pass the parameter value, then whatever the optional field is, right, this default value, so this will not be considered. So as a user, if you are passing any value, then this value will have the highest precedence guys. So this value will not be considered. Only the testng XML value will be considered. Okay, whatever the user is actually passing, that value only will be considered. So if the user is not actually passing the value, then only this optional field value will be coming into the picture. So let me execute this program. So now you can see the first test is actually opening inside the Firefox browser, right? So for the first test, we have actually provided the parameter value inside the testng XML file. So that is why it is opening inside the Firefox browser. And for the second test, we did not mention any parameter value inside the testng XML file, but still it is opening inside the Chrome browser. So how it is opening? So we have made the parameter as optional parameter and we have also provided some default value to the parameter, right? So whenever you don't pass any value to the parameter, by default, it will consider the default value of the parameter, okay? So where exactly this default value is present? So whenever you mention any parameter as an optional parameter, you are going to pass some default value also. So this default value will come into the picture when you don't pass any value from the testng XML file, guys. So this is how we have to work with the optional parameters inside the testng. So this is a very, very easy concept, guys. So if you don't want to pass any parameter value, then we have to make the parameter as an optional parameter. So whenever you make the optional parameter, we need to provide the default value. So whenever you don't pass, I mean, whenever as a user, I don't pass any value from the testng XML file, by default, it has to take the some default value, right? So the default value is nothing but this one. So when you make any parameter as an optional, we have to provide the default value. So with this default value, the execution will be continued. So that is about this video guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like the video, please hit the like button and also share this video with your friends. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.